Hello, and welcome once again to another especially light-hearted, heretical episode of Inside the World of Max Headroom. Um, I should have said uh, light-hearted, not, because uh, it's not a light-hearted subject, but uh, it's a, quite an interesting one. Um, and that is uh, incestuous family systems. Uh, you know, one of the things that I think is kind of cool about me and YouTube is that uh, there's a shitload of people out there who are interested in um, sexual abuse, pedophilia, this, that. And, uh, you know, I happen to know a lot about that. So there's like this little fit. But I don't want to make my station like an all sex abuse station because I have too many other interests that I want to share from Mac old, old Mackie's headroom. So, uh, but this is, I think, a good treat because I don't think I've ever seen anything presented like this on YouTube before. Um, but before I go on, uh, I want to tell you what the presentation is not. Because if you get the wrong impression, uh, a lot of negative aspersions could be cast on um, what I have to say that I think is very valuable. So let me tell you what it's not, okay? First of all, it's not about some kind of notion that certain kinds of dysfunctional families create incest, okay? Not, it's not what I'm talking about, okay? Another thing that I'm not talking about is that bad marriages create incest, okay? Not, uh, you know, this isn't one of those things where like, you know, well, you know, the husband and wife have a shitty sex life so the dad decides to dip down into the lower generation and grab some. No, no, not. Okay, um, but what it and what it is about is not it's not what it's about, but what it is is it makes the assumption that it takes a sexually deviant individual to start the ball rolling. Okay, um, so you know this isn't like something that says bad families make incest or sex abuse or whatever. Okay. Um, and another thing that I am talking about are families where uh, incest has a long history, okay? Uh, this is not a tape where, um, you know, uncle so-and-so uh, abuses the kid, the, mom, the kid tells the mom, she calls the cops because she doesn't care if it's her brother or not, she's not going to have anybody sexually abusing her kid, and whatever happens from there happens. Um, it's not about those sort of families. It's about the sort of families where incest goes on for a real long time. And uh, often we'll get involved with the social service system also, which I uh, want to talk about as well a little bit. So uh, I want to be real clear about what I'm talking about. I'm talking about long-term incest families where perhaps it never comes out for years until the kids launch from the home and, uh, you know, somehow maybe get married, uh, are in love with their husband, but, you know, get really uptight about having sex. And all of a sudden, they start having flashbacks and shit or whatever, you know. Uh, but that's what I'm talking about. So I'm not talking about families create incest. I'm not talking about marriages create incest because there's a bad sex life. Uh, I am saying that there it, it takes a sexually deviant person to get the ball rolling. And I also am saying that I'm talking about long-term chronic incest families where it takes a long time and you see those kids coming up with real bad PTSD. Okay, that's what I'd be talking about. All right. Um, I'm also, I want to make a note now that you got what I'm not and sort of what I am talking about. I do want to tell you what I am definitely talking about. And that is I'm talking about the ways that these long-term chronic incest families will structure themselves in such a way that maintains long-term sexual abuse, okay? It, it, you might, I hate the word enable because that, I don't like the word, okay? But you might, those of you who do, you might want to say, we're talking about structures of families which enable it to continue, which keep it secret. Um, and I'm going to tell you this, it's not just power. You're not going to hear a rap from me. You are going to hear about power, but you're not going to hear, you know, it's power that freezes everybody together and they can't do anything and nobody says nothing and blah, blah, blah. Um, but what you are going to hear from me is talking about how 
The family structure maintains incest, keeps it going, and protects the perpetrator because there's some sort of payoff that the structure, the way it is, uh, will continue it going. And sometimes those people know and sometimes those people don't know, the ones that are the non-offending spouses and siblings and stuff. But I got to tell you, I think most of them know what's going on. Uh, in these long-term chronic situations, again, we ain't talking about, you know, an unfortunate incident, okay? So, let's see. With that in mind, uh, let me wait. I just got to look at something here. Oh, also, oh, yeah, okay. So, I'm sorry. I created these um, little flashcards that I have. And uh, they have on them the various structures in a diagram, which I want to try to explain so you can kind of just get an understanding of where in these chronic long-term situations uh, what these families look like. Um, you know, I do want to make, it's not a disclaimer, but if it seems cheesy, uh, I'm sorry, uh, you know, that I'm using these little cards here. But, you know, being the boomer that I am, I don't know how to put those fancy things on the, you know, on my tapes where it looks all professional and shit. And, uh, I hope that doesn't bother anybody, but I'm going to do my best because I'm an old school YouTuber. Not in the terms I've been doing it for so long, but just because uh, I, I come from when YouTube was just started. So and when they were smoking salvia diminorum, you know, and recording it. Now, I'm not going to do that. But uh, I, this is my style, and I, I hope you can all appreciate it and just not see it. It's not have it undermined the value of what I have to present. Okay, disclaimer over. So, we're going to talk about the various structures. What they look like are kind of like fractions because families are in a hierarchical organization, right? We hope they are, okay? And uh, and so they kind of look like fractions. I'm going to try to describe these as best as I can because when I push them in the camera, it blocks my face out. It's a little hard to read, but anyway, we're going to try this, okay? So, let me introduce to you uh, June and Ward Cleaver and Beaver and Wally, okay? In other words, this is what you call a so-called normal family uh, system, okay? Oh, I want to mention one other thing. I'm going to be leaving out the subsystem of the marriage on purpose because when you're talking about parents and children and sex, I, the marriage is another issue in most instances. Yeah, it sucks, but it doesn't mean that it does a whole lot to maintain uh, the uh, sexual abuse because we're talking about parents acting on children. So you won't see marriage in here. You're just going to see parents and children, okay? So uh, here is the Cleaver family, okay? It's a normal family. Now, you can see that illustrated by the fact that... Uh, it looks like a fraction. There's a mother on top. Oh, also, I can't use my fingers to point because it's all backwards and it gets really screwy. So anyway, um, it, there's a mother on top. There's a father on top. There's You see those dots that go vertically? That means that there's a permeable boundary. Information can pass back and forth. There's equality, that kind of thing. And then you'll notice that there's a horizontal line that's dashed. And what that means is it's also a permeable boundary. It means that information can flow back and forth between it, but there's enough strength in there to keep the parents as parents and the children as children. You follow? Like, like parents don't have sex with their kids. So in this structure, they don't have sex with their kids. I mean, in one way, because the mother is the mother, the father is the father, and the kids are the kids, and there's a boundary that separates the generations and subsystems and this is what we hope a family will look like. And I almost guarantee that a family that looks like that will not show up for family therapy. They may show up for marital therapy, but you won't have problems with the kids. Okay, got it? That's the Cleavers. Okay, and I'm not being sarcastic either by that. I mean, not that it's the Cleavers, like they're so perfect, but I'm just saying that's what how a normal family actually looks that doesn't produce kids with a lot of problems. Okay, so... Okay, the next, now we're going to start to talk about incest families, okay? This is probably one of the most typical ones where it goes on for a long, long time. And uh, this is what you call, got to do this thing again, the father executive. Now, if you notice, this little fraction thing looks quite a bit different. Um, first of all, what you'll notice is that there's a father on top of the fraction line there, right? And the other thing you're going to notice is it's not a dashed line. It's rigid. It's, 
it's fixed. It, there's no way that information can be passing back and forth through that line very well. Um, and you'll also notice that on the bottom section, the children are down where they usually belong, but the mother is like one of the kids too. Um, and you'll also notice that there's an arrow that goes up across the generational line. And what that does, really what that would do is it would put another child equal to the father. That's what it means. It's called elevating the child, okay? And the dashed, the, the, the three lines that you see in front of you mean that they're over-involved, they're enmeshed. There's not a proper boundary between the father and now the child who has replaced the mother's role in the uh, parental subsystem. You, you, can you follow? Is that too fancy? But the mom's like a kid, or she might be an alcoholic, or you know, relatively just incompetent and so chronically ill could be. Um, but the father will elevate one of the children to replace her. Okay, and also one of the tragedies in these sort of families is I can't point. I'm sorry, but when you look at this kind of family, the child that gets elevated turns into what's called a parentified child. So not only does his or her, but it's usually a her, uh, life get burdened with being sexually abused and being sort of a pseudo-spouse uh, to um, the father, um, she also takes on uh, parentified roles with her siblings in the generation below. So she's often, you know, making dinner for the kids, um, and the mom is often just sort of incompetent in some way. Like I said, it could be physical illness. It, it, it could be alcoholism. It could be um, just whatever. That they're just as a parent, they tend to be more like a child. You also may see these mothers, you know, for instance, like, you know, going out and doing things with their kids and stuff, smoking reefer and shit. Uh, that, that, that also exists, okay? But that's what, what, what happens is the more that this structure exists, uh, the more incest is preserved. Be because what ends up happening is the father and child have sex. And that probably happens first. But then as it grows more and more, uh, you know, the uh, child takes on other roles like, the, like parenting the other kids or helping the mother out with whatever her problem is or doing the shopping or what have you. But she's got a hell of a burden on her shoulders, you know? Okay, so that's what we call father executive. Okay, now we're going to look at what's called mother executive. Now, this one's got, probably going to bug you because it kind of shows that the mother bears an awful lot of responsibility in maintaining the structure, but I'm sorry, it's the way it is. Uh, here is mother executive. Notice the fraction has changed once again. We still have this rigid line. See, instead of the dashed one that I showed you, hold on that I showed you, oh dear, where to go? Here it is. When I showed you in the normal family, there's the dashed line, which means it's a permeable boundary. Well, in this case, again, it's a rigid line. Can you see that? Okay. And if you notice, guess who's at the top? Mom is. And guess who's at the bottom this time? Dad is. So in comparison to the father executive, the mother executive, what it looks like is that the father's like a kid. And you see those three little lines there? That again means over-involvement, enmeshment. So you know what it shows is that the father is like a child. The mother's very much in charge of things. And um, it, you have to just understand that things just work synergistically. You know, it's it's nobody's fault it, at this point when it's structured this hard and uh, it's been going on for a long time. We're not talking about any one person's fault. It's just the way it is, okay? And um, so you, you see that the father's like a kid and what ends up happening is he sexually acts out with one of the children. Could be male, could be female, doesn't matter. Um, but he has no position in the parental subsystem. He's not up on top like you saw the other where there was mother and father. And there's this rigid boundary. So it's very hard for the mother to communicate to the father and the father to communicate to the mother about how they can work their shit out as parents. You follow? And in this process, very often, not because of it, oftentimes it starts out with sex, but it's also the, also the family may have kind of come together like this and then sex starts happening real fast. You understand? But it's more like the father is like a, a buddy. Um, and he, or, you know, like, yeah, he's like a buddy and, uh, he 
he gets over involved with the kids uh, in usually one or two in a sexual way. Okay. Yeah, this is also the father you oftentimes see sneaking into the bedroom, you know, uh, like when the kid's supposedly sleeping. Okay. That is Mother Executive. Okay. Gee, I, you know, I lost my fancy order I had here, but okay. This one's a great one. This is called The Chaotic Family. Okay. And basically, you could block out for the time being the stuff that's in the parentheses. Okay, what you notice is that there's like no boundary. Okay, there's like dot, there's just dots. It's not a rigid line, it's not a dashed line, it's just dots. And if you notice, everybody's in the same subsystem, which is the children's one, actually. Okay, mother, father, child, child, child. That they're all kids. It's what we call chaotic. Uh, there's no boundaries at all. Um, you know, oftentimes these are the kind of families that you see. Uh, the people on that show called the White Soft Underbelly come from, where the mother and father were both heroin addicts and the kid was too, and, you know, she's already doing heroin by 12. That's the chaotic family, okay? And, of course, there's sexual abuse, of course, all those tapes you've seen of uh, uh, Mark Liata, uh, you know, they all end up that way. So, uh, you know, being sexually abused. So there's the chaotic family. Now, the reason that I have... Uh, oh, grandparents or CPS, you know, Child Protective Services. Because a lot of times when these families go on like this for a long time, well, who ends up being actually the parents is, uh, I could have put, well, not foster home, but I could have put like uh, grandparents could end up being like the parents, right? A lot of times the kids will sometimes get sent to the grandparents, which is a nightmare uh, oftentimes. Sometimes it's not, but... Uh, uh, also, like, you know, Child Protective Services. A lot of times, certain Child Protective Service workers are a little, they overdo it a little bit, and they always, they scrutinize the family so much that they keep the mother and father still as children all the time. Um, and if the kids aren't removed, then when when the social services have already been involved, it's if the kids aren't removed, it's very likely the kid's going to get abused again. or Or the parents are going to, you know, continue to be heroin addicts and then, you know, contaminate the children in some way, okay? That's called the chaotic family system. Okay, and I've got one more for you. Let me just find it here. Like I said, oh, this is, this is an interesting one. Okay, this is what you call the estranged father. Now, don't get too concerned because it looks so funky. Let me try to explain it just real simply how it works. These are families who basically operate as a single parent mother very well. Uh, and the children are usually down in their right places and things go okay. The problem is she's got an attachment to oftentimes, you know, a lot of times this could be like, uh, maybe I shouldn't say this, but like, like baby daddies, you know, uh, paramours. Uh, they're fathers that are not in the home all the time. Okay, this looks really funny, by the way, because you can see my beard <laughs> below the little red thing, so it looks like it's really talking. If I go like that, it'll be more interesting. Anyway, um, sorry, there's nothing funny about this. What this is about is it's about a father who comes in and out of the family. And uh, here's where, like, power is really a big deal because what happens is is that he'll be out doing his thing and then he'll come back into the family, oftentimes like beat the shit out of the mother. And that's why there's an arrow forcing her down into the children's area. Because he'll just like take over, you know, push her down across the line, make her one of the kids, often through beating her up. And then he'll go down into the, into the lower generation, not acting as a child actually, but just come in, fuck all the kids. I mean, I've seen this many times, you know, two, three over a weekend scares everybody and then he would see the arrow meaning that he then leaves and then he decides to come back and then and the mother will allow that oftentimes out of fear because like i said she gets you see the arrow she gets pushed down below the generational line um so that is the estranged father you see this a lot in i hate to say it but you see it a lot in like um lower uh, opportunity areas 
um, you know, ghettos and stuff, uh, where the where there's a lot of different fathers and uh, paramours and stuff like that. But anyway, those are the various ways that families are structured. Now, again, uh, I'm going to wind up, but let me just uh, explain again that, uh, oh, I wanted to mention one other thing. One of the things you got to understand about mothers, uh, you know, like whether they're one of the children, whether they're high up in the hierarchy, whether they're in the, you know, chaotic form, one of the things that's real important to realize about moms, and I say this in their defense, okay, is oftentimes they've been sexually abused too. So in order to protect their kid and, uh, you know, blow the whistle, well, that means they've got to encounter their own abuse too. Whether, it, whether they're in charge of everybody and the reason they are is because they're overcompensating for being so unpowerful as a child and being abused themselves, are you with me? Then, you know, they're going to close their eyes to that kind of thing um, and just, you know, chastise the guy. Or maybe they'll know about it, but, I, you know, I, I, I'm, I can't get too into the details because I'll get shitty comments in the comment section below. But... <laughs> But um, you need to understand about mothers that oftentimes they've been sexually abused. And so they go on like autopilot. You, you, know, you see what I'm saying? As soon as it starts happening, they, they go on autopilot. And the main reason is because in order for them to do anything productive, even though they really might want to, it's because it has to open the door to their own abuse. It's a hell of a trap. It's a hell of a trap. So don't think I'm knocking mothers. You know, it's a, they've often been sexually abused. Um, otherwise, why would they hang out with a guy who sexually abuses their kid? Come on. So anyway, that's it, folks. Uh, I hope this was informative. You know, as I said, I, I, I'm not sure that I've seen any presentations about this, this kind of angle. But again, please don't hear me say that families cause incest. Sexual deviation causes incest. The structure of the family is what keeps it going, allows it to flourish, protects the perpetrator. Um, and uh, it's a sad, sad situation. Um, but that's the deal. So with that, I uh, wish you a fun time. I hope this was informative. And uh, once again, this has been another enjoyable, heretical episode of Inside the World of Max Headroom. Thank you so much. <laughs>